welcome to today's topic, which is permanent maxillary canine. We will be learning more about canines in general. Uh, we will be looking at the maxillary canine, the permanent maxillary canine, uh, the introduction to it, the chronology of permanent maxillary canine, and how it looks in the various aspects labial, lingual, mesial, distal, and incisor. Okay, so we'll jump right in to the permanent maxillary canine. Now, if you take a general introduction of both the canines, that is mandibular as well as maxillary canine, you can see that basically canines are long and they are stable teeth. And you can uh, see them placed at the, in the corners of the mouth and there are four canines. And uh, because they are placed in the corners of the mouth, they are, corner, they are also called as the cornerstones. And these canines will be having only a single cusp. And uh, that is why they are called as cuspids, as opposed to premolars, which usually have three, uh, sorry, which usually has, uh, have two cusps, and they are called as bicuspids. And the basic functions of uh, the canines would be tearing down of the food. And uh, there are subtle differences between maxillary canine and mandibular canine. The maxillary canine looks, uh, is having all the ridges very prominent. And because the ridges are prominent, the fossa is also very prominent in the maxillary canine. Yeah, that is not the case in the mandibular canine where the ridges are not very prominent. We'll look at uh, mandibular canine in detail later. As of now, we'll stick with maxillary canine. What is the timeline of uh, the maxillary canine, the chronology of permanent maxillary canine? We can see that it is first appearing in the radiograph at around four to five months. The first evidence of calcification can be seen in four to five months. The full enamel takes around six to seven years to complete. And the eruption has been observed to be between 11 to 12 years, 11 to 12 years. And the root, complete, com, uh, the root will be completed at around 13 to 15 years. The root will be completed at around 13 to 15 years. As a general rule, just remember that for any permanent teeth, if you know the eruption the, or the eruption uh, date, the root, the roots usually will be complete around two to two and a half years after the tooth is erupted. The root will be completed two to two and a half years after the uh, tooth is erupted. While for the primary teeth, after eruption, the root will be completed one to one and a half years after eruption. So, in primary teeth, we can see that the root will be completed a little more earlier compared to the permanent teeth. Now, we will take a look at the uh, different or the various aspects. How does it, uh, how does the permanent maxi can I look uh, in the various aspects? So first we look at the label aspect. How does the uh, maxi can I look from, from the lab label viewpoint? Now we can see that uh, uh, this is this is actually the uh, right maxillary canine, the right maxillary canine. We can see uh, that obviously it is having a cusp, it is having a cusp, it is having two cuspal slopes. This is the mesial cuspal slope, this is the distal cuspal slope. And it is having a very strong a labial ridge, the, uh, the labial ridge is very prominent. And uh, it is usually seen that the mesial cuspal slope is smaller or shorter than the distal cuspal slope. The mesial cuspal slope will be shorter than the distal cuspal slope. Also, if you look at the contact areas, at the mesial aspect, the contact areas or the contact area is almost at the junction of the incisal third and the middle third. The contact area is at the incisal and uh, at the junction of the incisal and middle third while the contact area at the distal aspect is almost in the middle of the middle third 
it's in the middle of the middle third so you can see that obviously there's a uh, change or uh, there is uh, the, le the levels are not same while here it is lower here it is a little more more cervical okay and you can observe that the uh, cervical line is somewhat uh, in, a, in a placed uh, somewhat it, it's in a, it's uh, somewhat uh, convex and the convexity is directed towards the root apex or towards the root the convexity is directed towards the root and uh, the distal aspect would be somewhat uh, flattened more flattened than the mesial aspect distal aspect of the crown is somewhat more flattened than the mesial aspect and uh, you can see that the root is somewhat longer and it is uh, apex is rounded off okay we just turn the teeth and we can observe the lingual aspect you can see the lingual aspect again we can observe the mesial cuspal slope the distal cuspal slope and the root uh, and the cusp tip the only a single cusp is there we can also see a uh, convexity here that is obviously the cingulum and running down from the cingulum you get a strong a ridge that is the lingual ridge there's a the ridge the lingual ridge and we can see two fossas on either side of the ridge we can see two fossas on either side of, uh, side of the ridge one would be the mesial lingual fossa and uh, the other would be the mesial sorry uh, this would be the distal lingual fossa so this is the distal lingual fossa mesial lingual fossa and obviously we have the distal marginal ridge and the mesial marginal ridge also mesial marginal ridge and the distal marginal ridge and again here you can observe the cervical line again convex and the convexity is directed towards the a uh, root root is somewhat uh, broad till the middle third and becomes slender towards the apical third now we'll uh, look at the mesial uh, sorry uh, the mesial aspect now this is the mesial aspect <clears throat> if you look at the crown you can observe that the this is the label outline this is the lingual outline label outline you can see it's somewhat uh, very convex but the greatest convexity would be at the cervical third the greatest convexity would be at the cervical third and it comes down and uh, joins evenly at the tip and here again if it, this is the lingual uh, shape and you can see that the lingual uh, uh, aspect uh, here uh, sorry this uh, this is the lingual outline you can see that the lingual outline here also there's a convexity at the cervical third and this convex convexity becomes a concavity from the middle third to the inside cell third and joins the tip here so we have a this is actually you can say concavo convex this outline is concavo convex the lingual outline is concavo convex and you can observe that the tip this is a cusp tip if you draw um, uh, an arbitrary midline bisecting the crown and the root you can see that this tip would be slightly labial to this imaginary line that bisects the crown and the root so this cusp tip would be slightly labial to this line to this imaginary line that uh, bisects the crown and the root okay and you can observe the cervical line cervical line you can see that it is dipping down towards the crown it is dipping down towards the crown the convexity is towards the crown and here you can observe that the root is slightly more broader labiolingually it is slightly more broader labiolingually and it is uh, the apex is rounded off
Now, this is the distal aspect, uh, just the uh, mirror image of the mesial aspect as such. Uh, Uh, I, I forgot to add one more thing. Uh, this this area that you see uh, see here is the mesial uh, contact area. This is the mesial contact area, the area uh, at which this uh, this particular teeth or this uh, maxillary canine contacts with the maxillary lateral incisor. And this is the area, and uh, this is almost in the junction of the incisal and middle third. This is almost in the junction of the incisal and middle third. And again, uh, this is the distal aspect, somewhat similar to the mesial aspect itself. This is the lingual outline, uh, sorry, this is the labial outline, convex, and this is the lingual outline, concave or convex, just like the other side. And uh, here you can see again the contact area, but this time this contact area is in the uh, middle of the middle third as opposed to the junction on the opposite side. Here you can see that this is in the middle of the middle third. And here I can also observe the cervical line dipping down into the uh, tooth crown. But uh, remember that usually the, the distal cervical line would, will be a little more shallower than the mesial cervical line. The mesial cervical line dips down a little, f little more further than the distal cervical line. And this is a, usually a general rule for all the teeth, where usually the mesial cervical line will be dipping down a little more further than the uh, distal cervical line. So usually the distal cervical line is a little less curved. Now we are looking at the incisal aspect. You can observe, uh, you can, uh, if you'll just observe this uh, incisal aspect, you can see that it's somewhat uh, uh, diamond shaped. You can see it's somewhat of a diamond shape. And we have bi uh, bisected it uh, both sides. This is the labial aspect, labial aspect, the lingual aspect. As uh, a general rule, usually you can say that uh, there will be a lingual convergence for all the teeth, for all the especially the anterior teeth, there will be a lingual convergence and that we can notice it here. And if you look at this line that uh, bisects these two areas, the labiolingual as well as the disto, uh, mesiodistal, we can see that uh, compared to this uh, midline of this arbitrary line, the cusp tip would be seen slightly labial to that line and also slightly mesial to the center of the crown. So this uh, this cusp tip, the, can, uh, the maxillary canine cusp tip would be labial to this line as well as slightly mesial to this uh, line that we are drawn, this arbitrary line that we are drawn, right? And uh, uh, this is the incisal ridge, somewhat straight. This is the incisal ridge, and uh, you can see that the incisal ridge would be bisecting the mesial and distal contact areas. Here, obviously, you, the, you should be getting the lingual ridge, and uh, you get uh, the two lingual fossas on either side. You get the two lingual fossas on the uh, uh, either side with a prominent cingulum. We get a prominent cingulum here, and as I mentioned earlier, usually the distal side would be a little compressed or more stretched to make contact with the maxillary first premolar. And the crown as such is, is not, uh, or you can say it is asymmetrical and uh, the distal half would be a little, a little more than the mesial half. The distal half would be more than the dist, uh, mesial half. So that is about the uh, incisal aspect. Okay, to summarize the uh, maxillary canine, we have seen how it looks in the mesial, uh, sorry, how it looks in the labial aspect. It is having a, a shorter mesial cuspal slope, longer mesial cuspal slope. 
it is having uh, the contact areas on the mesial side at the junction of the middle and incisal third, while the contact areas at the distal aspect would be middle of the middle third. It is having a strong labial ridge, strong labial ridge is there. Uh, distal half would look a little more uh, slightly compressed compared to the mesial half. And again, the, this tip would be slightly mesial to a line that we are drawing here would be slightly mesial also. And uh, the cervical line, as you can see, is somewhat convex and the convexity is directed towards the uh, root portion. Okay. Coming to the lingual aspect, just the opposite of uh, what we have seen on the label aspect, we can see that uh, there are some obvious changes here. We can see a large cingulum here. At the cervical one third, you can see a large cingulum. And leading from the single one down towards the incisal aspect, there is a lingual ridge. There is a lingual ridge. And on, on either side of the lingual ridge, you get two fo lingual fossas. This will be the mesial lingual fossa. This will be the distal lingual fossa. And obviously, there is the uh, marginal ridges on either side. And this is the cusp tip, mesial cuspal slope and the distal cuspal slope. As already mentioned, the mesial cuspal slope will be shorter than the distal cuspal slope. Coming to the mesial aspect, you can see that uh, if you look at the crown, this is the labial outline, somewhat convex, the lingual outline, concave or convex, uh, with the convexity here represented by the cingulum, and this would be the concavity, which shows the fossa. And if you draw a midline that bisects the crown and the root, this tip would be slightly labial. This tip would be slightly labial to the midline that bisects the crown and the root. And we already mentioned that uh, uh, the contact areas would be seen somewhat labial and at the junction of the middle and incisal third. And the cervical line, you can see it's just the opposite of what you see on the label or the lingual. It is dipping down towards the crown. It is dipping down towards the crown. So you can see that the convexity is directed towards the crown portion. And we get a, a large root or a long root, which is broad labio lingually. The distal aspect is almost, uh, uh, somewhat similar. But uh, here you can see that the contact area should be seen more on the middle third. It is seen more in the middle third. Again, you can see the cervical line dipping down, but you can see that it is not dipping down as far as like your mesial cervical line here. It is a, a little less. It, it dips down a little less than the mesial uh, cervical line. So that is a usual characteristic feature for, you can see most of the teeth. The mesial aspect uh, cervical line would be dipping down further than the distal cervical line. Coming to the uh, incisal, you can see that somewhat it's having a diamond shape. Uh, this is the labial aspect, lingual aspect. And you can see that the lingual aspect, it is, uh, there's a con uh, convergence from the labial to the lingual. There will be a, a, a ridge here, the incisal ridge, with, with the tip placed slightly mesially and labially. And the distal portion would be somewhat more uh, flattened or compressed compared to the uh, mesial aspect. We will be having a lingual ridge as well as two lingual fossas. Obviously, there are the ridges of uh, the mesial marginal ridge and the distal marginal ridge is also seen. So, that concludes the uh, lesson on the permanent maxillary canines. Thank you very much.